control this madness Little by little and day to day I fade into someone not like me And I didn't mean to die today What this is, is Joe the Shirts off the cuff. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, yet another in a long line of songs that made me want to kill myself. That was uh, <laughs> Megan Donovan and her song, uh, Did It Mean to Die? Might want to rethink that one, Megan. I'm just saying. Welcome back, everybody. It's good to be back. Wow, boy, four shows. This is my fourth show this month already. Uh, I, 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 I just, it really did take me by surprise when I realized that I had not been on at all for the month of May. Not, not even one time was I on. I, I had too much going on. I had my sister in town. I had work. I was looking for work. I was, I, it was just a whole bunch of shit going on. But it's good to be here with you guys now. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Um, first of all, let's let's just start off with the, the lead story. Everybody relax. Tracy Morgan isn't dead, okay? The uh, famous comedian actor is still alive. He's still well. He's still with us. He just has a couple of broken ribs, maybe a broken leg. Uh, and he's going to be hospitalized in the next several weeks. But all that said... He's still a diabetic. So, you know, he's fine. So let's not worry about him too much. He's okay. Now, for those of you who are not aware of what happened to comedian Tracy Morgan, famous for uh, his uh, longtime stint on uh, Saturday Night Live and the TV show 30 Rock, uh, you know, funny, funny, funny man. Uh, just goofy physical comedy and uh, uh, just great at... Well, basically playing an idiot in just about everything you see him in. But so many of the things he did, it was just so fucking funny. And I, I got to stop talking about him in the past tense. He is alive. Uh, comedian Tracy Morgan remains in critical condition as of Monday in New Jersey Hospital with a broken ribs, broken leg, and a broken nose, uh, which followed a six-vehicle chain reaction wreck that killed one of Morgan's friends and mentors. Uh, Morgan had surgery on his leg at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in New Brunswick. Uh, according to them, they expect him to remain in the hospital several weeks, but expect a full recovery. Uh, he has been hospitalized. He was also carrying uh, comedians Artie Fuqua and Harris Stanton who was struck from, when they were struck behind on Saturday by a Walmart truck. Uh, New Jersey police said that another comedian uh, passenger, James Jimmy Mac McNair, died in the crash. Uh, the Georgia-based driver of the truck, Kevin Roper, 35, has been charged with one count of death by auto and four counts of assault by auto. Uh, the prosecutor's office at Middlesex County said uh, Roper turned himself in on Saturday evening and posted a $50,000 bail. Uh, Williams said there was no initial indication that alcohol or drugs had played a factor in the crash, but there have been reports that Roper had been awake and driving uh, for the better part of 24 hours. Which isn't good for you. Uh, generally speaking, being awake for 24 hours is not a good idea. You know, that leads to a lot of bad things, both in your mind and your body. And if you believe in it, your spirit as well. It will fuck you up. And, uh, and that's if you're just doing nothing. Okay? If all you're doing is like watching TV and having a couple of beers for 24 hours, you know you're still going to be a little loopy. Trust me on that. At, at that 24th hour, that one sip of beer is going to send you into orbit, all right? But when you are driving, I don't know, an 18-wheeler, maybe you should get some sleep. I'm just saying, maybe. Which brings into account uh, the possible uh, further criminal charges uh, because much like uh, driving a vehicle while drunk and killing somebody can be uh, could, could be made into a murder charge. Also, driving uh, when you know for a fact that you've been driving too long 
and your uh, judgment is impaired, that could be turned into a murder uh, trial as well. So Mr. Roper has really, you know, has has his work cut out for him. But uh, Tracy Morgan is okay, so don't worry about him, okay? If you're hearing that sound right now, that is the sound of the air conditioner that just kicked in into Off the Cuff Studios. <laughs> Actually, the reason I bring up Tracy Morgan, uh, among other things, is uh, recently I uh, made contact with some old uh, stand-up comedian pals of mine uh, on Facebook. My buddy uh, Murray Valeriano, Matt Fulcheron, uh, Sam Tripoli. You know, I extended... My hand out to them and with a Facebook friendship, and they all answered in the yes. Uh, the funny thing is, I I, I have my serious doubts as, as to whether or not they remember who the hell I am. Uh, back in the day, I was known as Joe Figueroa. That was my stage name when I was performing stand-up comedy. Not the funniest guy in the world. I'll tell you that right fucking now. I wasn't, you know. But uh, these guys are all very, very talented uh, men. Uh, very, very funny. Uh, Sam Tripoli has been on TV. He's uh, performed all over the United States. I mean, he's just uh, one of the funniest guys you're going to meet. And he's hardcore, dude. I mean, he really is. I mean, his stuff is uh, it, it's in your face. It's loud. And it's meant to make you fucking listen. As a matter of fact, I think he has a new uh, comedy uh, CD and or DVD out right now. Sam Tripoli. Check him out. Uh, don't watch it with the kids. I haven't seen it yet, but my... My advice to you is watch it by yourself first before you bring the kids in. Uh, Matt Fulcheron, known as Matt the Full Charge Fulcheron. I used to know him back when he was Matt Fat Bag of Weed Ful Fulcheron. Uh, a bit more low-key, actually a lot more low-key, but he's really incisive, really sharp guy. He's one of those kind of guys that uh, he'll just come up with like some really odd, bizarre, twisted shit, but on the down low... So it seems it almost seems like perfectly normal that he's saying it because of the way he says it. But then when you like take a second to think about it, you're thinking, "Wow, Matt, that's really fucked up." <laughs> and then you have Murray Valeriano, whose name I always fuck up. Uh, really, really funny guy, one of the nicest guys you're ever gonna meet. Uh, he used to perform with all these guys, but Murray's one of those kind of guys that uh, he's always likable. No matter what he does or says, it always comes up as very, very likable. I mean, Murray can go tell you to go fuck your mother, and somehow or another, you won't feel offended by it. So I, I don't know how he does it, <laughs> but he's got this very easy way about him. I mean, it, 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 not to compare him to uh, you know, Bob Saget, but it, in a lot of ways, he's very disarming the way Bob Saget is. You know, he's just like, you know, you look at Bob Saget, you listen to Bob Saget, you know, it's like, He's saying the nastiest, filthiest things on the planet, but you'd not. A lot of times, you don't glom onto it because you know, you know, he was in Full House, <laughs> America's Funniest Home Videos, and that's how you think of Murray Valeriano, uh, who these days I hear uh, was married, uh, or is married. I don't, I don't know if Murray's made it work, unlike my own marriage, and uh, and I believe has children, or at least one child. That's what I've heard. You know, so good for him, good for those guys. Uh, I know that uh, Matt. Uh, Sam and Murray are still performing. They're still touring uh, around the country. Uh, Sam's got the DVD, CD out. Matt Fulcheron, uh, I know had a podcast here in L.A. for a while. And uh, he still performs all over town and, uh, you know, around the country. And then Murray, uh, who was just in Vegas, uh, also uh, performs all over the country. And I believe, and, and he has his own website. These guys all have their own websites, so check them out. And you can catch all their stuff on their websites, including uh, Murray's uh, podcast, I think, uh, Road Stories, which is uh, him talking to other comics. A lot, most of them guys I knew and used to work with, you know, that, uh, and they talk about, you know, stories about, you know, life on the road, which can be a lot more bizarre and boring than you might think it is. All right, so check those guys, those guys out one more time Sam Tripoli, Matt Fulcheron, and Murray Valeriano. Anyway, which brings us, uh, oddly enough, uh, Murray was in Las Vegas uh, right around the same time that those two nut jobs uh, decided to shoot Las Vegas up. Now, there's many, many things I find interesting about this story in particular. Uh, one of them being um, that they didn't go to like any of the glitzier, high-end neighborhoods of Las Vegas. Mm-mm. They were like in like the 
the shithole parts of Las Vegas, the parts of Las Vegas that when you go to Las Vegas, you don't go to. You know, these are the parts of Las Vegas that you only catch on, like, uh, CSI Las Vegas when there happens to be a nasty murder out in the boonies or over by a warehouse or, uh, you know, an outlet store, you know, that kind of place. But I'm talking to you about Jared and Amanda Miller uh, who lost their shit and decided to take their shit out on uh, on Las Vegas. On uh, Sunday, apparently, they... Uh, well, here, let me read you a little bit here. Uh, let's see. Um, well, where is that story? Here, here it is. Here it is. Hold on. I got a couple of stories here. Uh, two killers, a man and a woman, walked into a pizzeria, CeCe's Pizza, actually, uh, here uh, in Vegas at midday, beginning a bloody Sunday rampage that left five people dead, including two on-duty police officers ambushed as they were having lunch. Uh, the two of them were heard yelling out some sort of rhetoric, uh, Quote, the revolution is about to start, one of the killers shouted out after the pair had gunned down the officers, grabbed their weapons and ammunition, and stormed out of the nearby Walmart. Now, it was, that's not all they did. Apparently, after shooting them, uh, let's see now, here we go. Let's see, a, uh, Jared Miller uh, covered them with a Gad's Den flag, which is a yellow banner with a coiled snake above the words, don't tread on me, you've probably seen it before. And placed uh, a manifesto with a swastika symbol on one of the bodies. Now, as far as I know, these guys are not white supremacists. I think what they were trying to indicate is that the cops were Nazis. Now, to my, as far as uh, as far as witnesses, media, family members know, uh, the pair, Jared and Amanda Miller, did not know the two police officers, uh, Alan Beck, 41 years old. And uh, Igor Soldo, 31 years old. Uh, both of them uh, married, family men, uh, one with three children. At least Soldo, had, had, Soldo and his wife had a baby. Uh, tragic. I mean, that just, that just sucks. I mean, these guys were at CeCe's Pizza. They were having lunch. You know, they weren't doing nothing to nobody. But now here's the... And then after shooting the cops and taking their weapons, they went over to the nearby Walmart See how this ties into the first story? Tracy Morgan hit by a Walmart truck. Huh? Huh? And then... And then... And then, I'm sorry. I shouldn't make fun, but I, I'm going to anyway. But Jared and Amanda, then they go to the nearby Walmart and shoot the place up, killing about three other people. Um, again, shouting out, but the revolution's begun. Revolution's begun. Okay, real quick here. Oh, actually, let me let me get to the end, and then let me fill out the middle for you. Uh, at the end of it all, after exchanging gunfire with uh, L.A. with uh, you know uh, NPD Nevada Police Department uh, or the LVPD Las Vegas Police Department uh, in the in their Walmart there, uh, and shooting you know three shooting uh, several people, killing three. Uh, Amanda proceeded to shoot her husband kill him, and then put the gun to herself, shooting herself in the head and killing herself in an apparent, uh, oop, an apparent um, murder-suicide or double-suicide kind of deal. Um, mm -mm -mm. So, here's the thing now. This is now they're, they're screaming about revolution and revolt and all this other shit. And my, my point here is, um, if you're going to go off spouting off about the revolution and the revolution has begun and you kill a bunch of people and then you kill yourself without telling us what you're talking about, wasn't that just a fucking waste of time? I mean, doesn't that really what that amounts to? It's a waste of fucking time and a waste of fucking lives, a waste of ammo at the very fucking least. I mean, what, what, why would they do this? It's absolutely senseless. You know, these guys, these people were idiots. That's what I'm saying. You know what? To the family members of the two killers, uh, you raised up a couple of psychos. You should blame yourselves. Uh, to the families of the cops and the victims of the Walmart, I'm sorry. Other people didn't raise their kids right. Okay, that's fucked up. Uh, I, I'm sorry. You you know what this reminds me? Of? It reminds me of that movie Cobra from like way back I don't know, back in the '80s. 
um, <laughs> where you had all these guys, you know, that they were just like, you know, they were like clink clank axes, you know, during like a video scene or whatever. It was like music playing in the background. And then they like walk into a local grocery store and just start shooting the fucking place up, talking about the revolution or whatever this, and never explain to anybody why they're doing it. You know, this is what this is like to me. This, this is completely senseless. At least when you're a terrorist, you have a point. You know, and, 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 and you're doing it for a reason. You let everybody know about the reason. I don't give you a reason is absolute bullshit, crazy, or stupid, but at least, at least you let people know about it. And now it's a time for the official first show the shirts off the cuff break. Uh, I might take a little longer than I usually do because I need to go pee. I'm Joe the Shirt, I'm off the cuff, and here's more Megan Donovan and her song, The Owner. Megan Donovan and uh, some song or another <laughs> that we're supposed to identify with, I suppose. I don't know. In any case, uh, hold on, let me see. Let me get this straight here. All right. In any case, well, no, I didn't mean to put that one on. I put this one on now. In any case, uh, I'm talking about uh, Jared and. Uh, What's this bitch? Amanda Miller, who the couple that went loco in Las Vegas, killed uh, five people, including two police officers. Um, yeah, they, 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 they were screaming about revolution while shooting up a pizza place and uh, Walmart, because that's exactly where I would want to start my revolution, is at a local pizza place and a Walmart. Um, and I said, they, 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 at no point do they let anybody know what the revolution is really okay okay one quick thing he did leave allegedly a manifesto on one of the cops bodies we i've yet to see what that manifesto says but judging from uh, some of the stuff i've learned about these guys since then um nothing really sensical nothing really that would really make much sense to anybody uh well one thing i do know about these guys um they were geeks. Uh, Jared, a very tall, lank human being that made uh, most of his living in Las Vegas from dressing up like comic book characters and begging for money on the street. And uh, Amanda, who worked at a hobby shop, even though being a very good student and apparently a violin player. I, in any case, they liked dressing up in comic book character roles. Uh, among their more favorite ones, according to this, uh, dressing up like the Joker and, Har and his girlfriend Harley Quinn. You know, at least they didn't dress up like the Joker and Harley Quinn before they went shooting the place up. Not like that other asshole in, what was it, Colorado, you know, dressed up, go, went around calling himself the Joker when he shot up that movie theater. And it was the Batman movie, you know, I was like, at least they didn't do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, they did post a lot on Facebook. Uh, Amanda had said on her page that I found my freak. She wrote, uh, you are the best. I said, until death do us part, and I meant it. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, the, the, the Facebook postings, postings got a little, little, little bit more weirder as things went on. Uh, here's one for you. Uh, 
Actually, no, this is this comes from uh, Amanda's father, Todd Woodruff. Uh, quote, she was my sunshine and now she's gone. Uh, and I just don't think I just don't think that I'll be able to get over it. His hands shaking as he held a cigarette. Uh, Amanda Woodruff had met her future husband in her late in her hometown of Lafayette, a flea, at a flea market where Miller worked. He was a convicted drug dealer and car thief who got into political fights with his family on Facebook and struggled to meet his various parole conditions. Uh, here's w- something that uh, was after uh, Amanda and uh, Jared had made their relationship official. Wrote on Facebook. Uh, to the people in the world, you're lucky I can't kill you now, but remember one day, one day I will get you because one day all hell will break loose and I'll be standing in the middle of it with a shotgun in one hand and a pistol in, in the other and looking for blue light specials at Walmart, apparently. I don't know what uh, she's talking about here. Uh, post after post on, on uh, Jared's Facebook page expressed disgust for the American consumer culture and called for an armed revolution to protect the cause of personal liberty from the Republicans and Democrats in power, uh, comparing the, ju- the judges in his own personal uh, criminal uh, uh, trials as Nazis. At one point, he even wrote uh, about what would happen if the Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson and Denver Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning announced they wouldn't play in the Super Bowl in protest of government agencies such as Homeland Security and National Security Agency. Quote, how many people do you think would wake up? Surely there would be riots. All hell might might break loose. LOL. I love it that (laughs) while talking about (laughs) violent revolution... (laughs) And upheavals, he still has time to put in a little LOL for everybody. Uh, Amanda would write things about her husband uh, on Facebook. Uh, I love this man with every inch of me, and I know that some people don't like him or approve of our relationship, and that's okay. It's our love, and I know it's weird, and I know it's different, but that's what makes it so special. Mm Mm-hmm. And then early Sunday morning, Jared Miller pulled out some... Swastika, swastikas in an army insignia and said to his roommate, I'm going to put one of these on every cop we kill. I'm thinking, right, said, said, said the roommate. They're not going to do that. She then adds, I should have called the cops. I feel I have the deaths of five people on my shoulders. The signs were there. Um, and there you go. Look, I'm not saying that you can't hate the government. Go ahead. Hate the government. That's fine. You know, I'm not, not a big fan of the government at all times. But I do appreciate the government's role in a lot of the things that I do with my daily life, like protecting me from nuts like Jared and Amanda Miller. I uh, also appreciate, uh, you know, that... Uh, they were they were all for anarchy. They wanted to like abolish all government controls of any kind. And I'm like, you know, when you do that, you know what happens? People kill people. I mean, people kill people now, but you know, you abolish a government rule, and then people will kill people because they just fucking feel like it, and not just because they've snapped, which is what these guys did. Um, I'm 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 very sick and tired of stupid people. I'm, so, I'm tired of them going out there and just claiming that they have some righteous cause of some sort or another, some bizarre agenda that uh, that only they understand and they only see, and you need to see it well, you as well, you know. And and it sounds nutty, doesn't it? You you think about this, and it sounds like it's really out there, but the truth of the matter is. A lot of our government and religious institutions started out exactly that way, all right? So don't think for a fucking second that, you know, you know, just because you go to church and you vote Republican means that you're a normal person. Nah, nah, nah. That's not where the origins of those things are. Mm. But yeah, these guys are nuts. Uh, and again... Uh, my condolences to the families of those two slain officers and the three people that died at the Walmart. Uh, again, it just feels like I keep doing the same story over and over again, doesn't it? It just feels like every time I turn around, some nut job and his wife now, apparently, you know, I mean, talk about wanting to do things as a fucking couple. It's like, hey, you want to go to the movies? No. Want to go to the beach? No. 
Want to shoot up the local pizza place in Walmart? You know what, baby? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> you know, it's like I was thinking the same thing. I mean, okay, I was thinking about the burger place and the Target, but I like your idea better. I th- I, let's go. Let's go with that. Let's go with the pizza place and the Walmart. All right. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys before, but I'm going to mention it to you now. Seattle has raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour, uh, which means I'm moving to Seattle to get a job at McDonald's. <laughs> no, I know it's, it sounds bizarre to everybody. Now, already uh, local businesses in Seattle are planning on suing the city to fight this uh, because that would effectively, I think, double uh, minimum wage in Seattle here. Um, Mm-mm-mm. Trying to see what trying to find here. Where, where is the uh, currently uh, currently the federal minimum wage is seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Uh, the workers in Seattle currently earn the Washington State minimum wage of uh, nine dollars and thirty two cents an hour, which is the highest minimum wage in the country. Okay, Seattle has the Washington State has the highest minimum wage in the country at nine dollars and thirty two cents. So they are now looking to, to they just upped it by $5 and uh, 68 cents. So that's a pretty big jump. Okay, that's a, that, that's a, that's a better than a 35% jump in the minimum wage. And so, you know, uh, Seattle businesses are going to look to block this. Now, you think to yourself, wow, that's quite the anomaly. Thank God that couldn't happen, you know, here where I live. You know, if you happen to be some some guy that's in business, you know, plays minimum wage, or uh, you're thinking, "Gee, I hope I, I wish that could happen here, but I know it won't." But don't think it won't, because even right now, Los Angeles is going through uh, some some uh, uh, doings where they might be raising the minimum wage to uh, hotels of a certain size to uh, over fifteen dollars only, something like fifteen dollars and thirty five cents an hour. For hotel employees, and of course, you know, hotels are claiming, "Hey, if you do that, we're not going to be able to be competitive. We're not going to be able to make a profit. We're not going to be able to do it." And I'm like, you know what? You're a fucking liar. Yes, you will be able to. Okay, maybe you pay your CEO a little less. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe maybe your investors get a little bit less on their return, but don't tell me that you can't afford it. That's a lie. That's a blatant fucking lie. All right, uh, but it is a very good chance that right here in Los Angeles, it's going to happen. If it happens, if it's already happened in Seattle, it can happen all over the state of Washington. And if it happens here in Los Angeles, it can happen all over the state of California. And if it, ha- if it can happen in Washington, California, believe me, the state, the, the, the federal minimum wage could make its way faster than you think to $15 an hour. And unlike what Republicans predict, I don't think that it'll put our country into a tailspin of businesses closing and moving away. And that's not going to happen. That is the nightmare that they're trying to sell you. That is, that, that is the Republican uh, agenda that they're trying to give you. Because the Republicans want to make sure that the rich stay richer and the poor stay poor or get prison. That's what they're trying to tell you here, okay? So don't believe it. Uh, I guess, I guess the question that always comes to mind is do, do people who currently make you know, the minimum wage, which is federally $7.25, um, should they make basically more than twice as much as they do right now? Which is, you know, from seven twenty five to $15 an hour. And I don't know if you've ever had a minimum wage job, be it at McDonald's, your local movie theater, uh, delivering newspapers, uh, you know, whatever, what, you know, whatever it is, uh, working as a waitress, you know, I, you know, even with tips, I got to tell you, you know, here in Los Angeles, eight bucks an hour don't cover a lot, all right, especially here in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a very fucking expensive city. So is Seattle. So is New York. Okay, 
So, you know, before you start thinking that, you know, these guys are over, these, at $50,000, these guys are going to be overpaid, why don't you try doing one of these fucking jobs? I'm sure most of you have, and that's why a lot of you went out of your way to educate yourselves and uh, get those jobs that make more money. You know, you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, you're an investment banker, whatever the fuck it is you do, you know. But don't think that that entitles you to screw over other people. You know, and uh, you know what, and, and, the, and the two biggest things that people are always talking about, you know, is, you know, the middle class is getting squeezed out because they have to pay for, you know, the poor being poor and they have to pay for the rich screwing over the poor. You know what? No, it's not just the middle class. It's not just the poor. We all get to suck it if there isn't a better redistribution of the wealth, of the money out there. I'm not looking, you know, I'm not even looking for a redistribution of wealth. I'm looking for a redistribution of of the money available i don't want i don't want to take your money away from you and just give it to anybody i want all the money that's out there that's earned to be earned on a basis that makes sense anyway it's time for a break (laughs) and more uh megan donovan uh her song play let's hope it's light i'm joe the shirt i'm off the cuff and i'll be right back Welcome back, everybody. All right. God, we're talking, we're covering so many topics today, and I'm really enjoying doing it because, uh, you know what? I, I, my brain bounces around like a fucking hockey puck. It bounces around like a pinball trapped between uh, two bumpers. You know, it's just, that's, that, that's the way my brain works. My brain has never worked in a linear fashion unless I force it to. So I just like, you know, bringing all these topics to you guys and just spewing out what I think about it. Now, as I've always said, people like to get pissed off about the dumbest shit on the planet, the most insignificant shit on the planet, and today's, this particular topic is no different. Okay, now, for those of you out there, do we all believe that at some point or another, World War II happened? Are we agreed? And uh, it was sometime in the 1940s, early 1940s. Yeah, we, we agree on that? Okay, okay. And do we agree that it was mostly Germany responsible for it with its allies, Italy and Japan? Okay, we're good on that. All right, okay, okay, okay. And do we agree Germany was led by some little shithole of a, of a, of a dictator named Adolf Hitler? Are we all good there? Okay, we're good. Okay, all right, all right. Now, can we agree, if everything else so far we believe is true, can we agree that the Nazis are responsible for the Holocaust, also known as the systematic murder of over 6 million Jews and other people of religious beliefs and sexual orientations and cultures? Can we agree on that? I think we can. All right. That's fine. Good. Now, apparently, (laughs) this story I find uh, amusing because it is so ridiculously sad. Um, According to this, from, uh, let's see, uh, from the Los Angeles Times, uh, eighth graders in in Rialto school were asked to consider whether or not the Holocaust happened. 
Now, I'll be the first one to tell you, yeah, it did. But let me give you the background on this one, okay? Uh, what started out as an eighth grade critical thinking writing, writing assignment has become a source of relentless controversy for Rialto school officials who apologized profusely and publicly this week for asking that students consider whether the Holocaust was created for political gain or didn't happen at all. Okay. This is basically debate class. You, ever, you guys remember debate class at all? In debate class, you were given an assignment, pro or con, and asked to uh, defend your point of view, pro or con, whether or not you agree with it. Okay? Okay. Like, for instance, uh, somebody could be, somebody say, could say to you, okay, uh, Jimbo, we want you to, we want you and Sally to argue what, who, what makes a better pet, cats or dogs. Jimbo, you're going to take the position that cats are better pets, and Sally, you're going to take the position that dogs are better pets. Now, Jimbo has three Rottweilers. Sally has a cat that she dresses up in a little pink outfit every day, a different one, every day. But Sally's been assigned to defend the idea that dogs are better pets and that Jimbo's been assigned the idea that cats make better pets. Now, obviously, Sally's a cat person, Jimbo's a dog person, but the assignment is take this idea and defend this particular point of view. It's not up to you to, whether or not to agree with it. It's up to you to just defend it, to make a, 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 a logical, clear, concise argument for this point of view the point the, the point of the exercise is not for you to believe it it's for you to develop your skills as an orator as a someone that argues as a debater that is your that is your job to develop your skills it's very easy to defend something that you already believe in okay but uh, but developing your skills to defend something that you don't believe in that's where the real learning comes in. So, yes, you know what? Okay. The question is, <clears throat> whether the Holocaust was created for political gain, yes, most likely it was. Okay. Uh, Hitler probably. Hitler came up with, developed an environment where, <clears throat> excuse me, where he told everybody that was following him, hey, you know what? Let's all hate the Jews, blame the Jews for everything, and let's exterminate the Jews. We'll hate the Jews. And when once they're all gone, the world will be better and we'll be in charge. He managed to convince a lot of people of this. And the ones he didn't convince, he had executed. <coughs> okay, so that's what he did. Okay, we all know that's what happened. But then there's the other side. Uh, also often led by neo-Nazis and white supremacists, that uh, this never happened, that it was just some, it didn't happen at all, and uh, that it's also uh, being used for political gain by the Jews and their allies to uh, vilify and make, you know, the, the, the Nazis and Adolf Hitler look worse than they actually were. It's like, hey, no way did we actually kill over 6 million Jews. It didn't happen. No, no, no. That's something that the Jews made up. <laughs> Sound familiar? Okay. Okay. I. So then what happened? Rather than let 8th graders take on this very, very interesting topic of debate and letting them argue it pro or con... Like I say, you don't have to agree with the topic in a debate. You just have to find a way to make your side sound convincing. This is an exercise for your mind. Not to really believe anything. Uh, but uh, but then, so, then groups such as the Anti-Defamation League and the Simon Weisenthal Center called it grotesque. Uh, uh, the... Now, the district of uh, Rialto said that the assignment was meant to satisfy common core standards of critical thinking, but quickly pulled it and uh, promised revisions. Uh, a spokeswoman called it a bad mark on the district's record. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, the, an emergency school board meeting uh, last Wednesday. Officials be, uh, again apologized for what they called a misguided attempt at being thought provoking and pushing roughly 2,000 students to think critically. Wow. Pushing students to think critically. Those bastards. There was a heavy police presence at the meeting because board members and school staff have received death threats. Okay, see that? See, that's where you get fucking really stupid, don't you? Here you go talking about, hey, how dare you insinuate that six million Jews weren't murdered? How dare you insinuate that these atrocities didn't happen? If I hear you say that shit again, I'm going to fucking kill you. Okay, see, that's dumb. <laughs> that's called being a hypocrite. <laughs> Um, quote, from the bottom of my heart, I feel sorry for this whole thing happening, said Interim Superintendent Mohammed Z. Islam. Uh-huh. <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't want to... <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> as much as we know the Nazis, not big lovers of the Jews, uh... People named Muhammad Z. Islam usually aren't either. <laughs> but, you know, it's it, it, it's a bad situation for this guy especially. But honestly, you, you have to... You, you, you can't hold on to this kind of shit. You really can't. Hold on here. Oh, my God. It's, it, it, it really is one of those cases where... It's not. It's it's a non-issue. They're asking you to have critical thinking. You know what? Uh, unless you were there, you don't know for a fact that anything happened. Remember the old story about you know if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's around to hear it, doesn't make a sound. Well, you and I all really both all know. Yeah, it fucking happened. It, you know, it did make a fucking sound, but. The concept is you don't know because you weren't there, you know? And even if somebody says, hey, I was there and I heard it, I heard the tree fall, it made a sound, definitely happened, that doesn't mean that you know for a fact that it did because you're hearing this secondhand, okay? Which is right up there, which, and you don't, what, you don't think this can happen? How about back, way back when you were, I don't know, in junior high school, and your buddy Mark said, hey, dude, <laughs> me, me, me and Jennifer, we fucking did it. Yeah, yeah, we did it at folks place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, yeah. Well, you don't know Jennifer, but no, no, we did it, man. We did. We fucking did it, man. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, yeah. I stuck it in her. In, in her what? You know, in her thing. I stuck it in her, man. No, no, I did it. I did it. Don't worry about it, man. I did it. And, and you know Mark is lying. <laughs> you don't even know anybody named Jennifer. <laughs> But you know that shit like that happens. Again, I'm not saying the Holocaust didn't happen. I believe it did. Okay? Uh, I, I know people who've had family members that were there. But there you go. That's where you have, you're able to have this debate. You're able to have this, this argument. You, you don't... This is critical thinking. This is debate. This isn't, you know, history. This isn't fact-based. We're talking about being able to make arguments, critical thinking, and developing your mind. Uh, and finally, on the quick side here, you guys remember Nick, uh, Nick O'Bannon? You guys remember him at all? Uh, hold on, wait. Let me show you. Get, oh, yeah, Nick O'Bannon. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Ed O'Bannon, excuse me, not Nick, not Nick O'Bannon. Ed O'Bannon, a uh, former uh, UCLA player, basketball player, right here in Los Angeles. He is leading a lawsuit, which started just this week, I believe on Monday, uh, suing uh, 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 video game companies as well as the NCAA for the right to profit from his image being used in video games and other licensing uh Endeavors. Uh, now, as you all know, the NCAA has a very strict rule of keeping an amateur status for its players to prevent them from being wooed into schools with better, pro with bigger, more expensive programs, a lot more money programs, uh, and to keep the recruitment of players fair and even. 
We all know that's bullshit. That doesn't really happen. But the idea being that, you know, as long as, these, they're, as, long as they're not being compensated, they retain their amateur status, and everybody has a fair playing field for recruiting these great players. That's a lie. That's a load of shit. And uh, colleges and uh, video game makers and, uh, and, and poster makers and all these other businesses have been making money off of college players for the last, ooh, I don't know, 108 years that this rule has been in place. And uh, I think it's about time that these guys stop getting fucked over. And I'm going to continue this story when I come back on the next episode of Joe the Shirts Off the Cuff. Because my time is up. But I have one time for just a little bit more of Megan Donovan and her song, Wishing Well. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm Off the Cuff. Thank you for listening. You are-